So here we are back at AMA 1. We dug the footing and we have rebar going in. So right now these guys are installing rebar for the footing. So that's the base of the dome. It's uh, 48 inches wide. We're using number five rebar. This is a beast. This is gonna be such a durable, long lasting foundation. So this trench that I'm in is for plumbing. So we're gonna have three um, lines of plumbing that will go in here, a supply line and two drain lines. The next one over is for electrical. So on this side of the structure, they've already started on putting in uh, the rebar for the stem wall. So the stem wall goes up above the footing and that creates the base that we're able to then put in the gravel, the insulation and pour the slab. And it acts as basically like a dam for all of that material. So this rebar creates the outside border of the pad. So this big hole, which is right here in the middle of our pad is actually the footing for our stairs. So our helical stairs are gonna have um, a footing that goes in here. It's gonna to attach to this concrete pad and it will spiral up. So this footing is what we need to attach that spiral staircase to the ground. Welcome to the GeoShip Lab. So you've heard us talk again and again about bioceramics, but what exactly is it? Dr. Ali, a Turkish professor, revolutionized this material that was originally used in the medical industry. Now he's using it for something much more versatile. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm the lead material scientist of GeoShip. I made my master's and PhD in material science engineering in ceramic division. Over the last 24 years of my academic life, I became a bioceramic expert working on calcium phosphate based ceramics. I started using those things in dental restoration materials, hip, knee joints, elbow replacements. I wanted to use those things as a building and construction of the house, as if I am building and constructing a body. Bioceramics have three different properties, bioinertness, bioactiveness, and biodegradable. This material is the most special material to construct something and we can tailor this by using our powders in different ratios for different mold types or designs. We have created four different rock materials in-house and it's our proprietary material. This is bone rock that's in my hand and this is just like our bones. These are the skeleton of our geodesic home. This has the highest durability. This is composite engineered for strength, flexibility and durability at the same time. I have shell rock in my hand. This is a special product that is used for exterior skins. It's fire resistant to 750 degrees C. It's water resistant. It doesn't allow water to pass through and it's impact resistant, a tree fall on it. It's also flood resistance and earthquake resistance. It has a very high UV exposure resistance, which will span its life to 500 years. This is bone rock. This is specifically made for connecting skins to each other, to the strut as well, which cures together to become one material all at once. This is light rug. This light rug is our most versatile material. It can be super light, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, just like cotton, and it can float on the water. And you can apply that material into different places from your interior skins, ceiling, ground, or insulation materials. Buckminster Fuller called the domes that were built in the 60s and 70s wooden spaceships. Like the right geometry, but the wrong material. Previously in home building, you really had metal, wood, concrete, and petrochemicals as the major material families. Geopolymers and bioceramics really represent a new fifth family of materials. What's unique about this material family is that traditionally, if you think of like ceramics, cements, and epoxies as three different types of material, this material really sits in the middle of all those in that it is a ceramic, so it's highly crystalline with covalent and ionic bonding, and it's like a cement in that it's a powder that is uh, you mix with water and it fires at room temperature. It doesn't require high heat. And it's like an epoxy in that it forms very strong molecular bonds with many different substrates from metal and wood and itself. So this is shell rock what our exterior panels are made out of, which is the green you see here. And this is the bond rock that 
fuses the entire structure together. And that's what you see here. And you see the shell rock, the green, broke before the bond did, which means this is over 10,000 PSI in compressive strength. Um, that means the bond strength of bond rock is over 10,000 PSI. This is like higher than aerospace grade epoxies. And it so happens that this new family of materials is very similar to the chemical composition of bone. We're talking about magnesium, calcium, phosphate. It's bone material that becomes the entire home. So imagine homes that almost like a third skin. It's resonating biologically. They're 100% so, they're non-toxic materials that are highly crystalline, hold a charge field so we can actually build homes that make plants grow better, increase the rate of seed germination, potentially even support like improved heart rate variability and brainwave coherence. I mean, imagine coming into your home and it bring, helping you come into coherence, which means we're in better coherence with others in the home too. It's actually improving our relationships. I mean, imagine if homes could do this. That's really the new paradigm of what success in architecture means. Thank you for joining this journey with us. If you've learned something new, maybe about bioceramics, please leave a comment below because we would really love to hear from you. Until next time, stay tuned and stay well.